Anybody that has been playing Classic WoW recently has probably discovered how important gold is in this version of the game. From the low levels to level 60 to an end game raider, you're going to need gold no matter what. I have made videos about farming gold in Classic WoW, but in this video I'll give you guys some farming spots that not many people know about. And hopefully watching this video you guys can come up with some ways to get some gold in game, so let's get into 5 hidden gold farm spots in Classic WoW. Starting off at number 5 is Shadowfang Keep. So I'm sure the majority of you guys have run this dungeon before and are wondering how this could actually be used to farm gold in the game. You see Shadowfan Keep is quite unique in the fact that it has a bunch of really expensive BOE blue items that are insanely good for the low level that you can get them. And when I mean good, I mean people are willing to spend hundreds of gold to buy one of these BOE items. So the trash mobs in SFK all have quite a big loot table and unique to this dungeon you can get some insane blue items. On average there is about a 0.14% chance that any given trash mob in this dungeon will drop a BOE blue. There are approximately 85 mobs in SFK so that would mean if you run SFK 7 or 8 times you would have a very high chance of getting one of these blues. And the reason why this is important is because the blue items that you get here, a lot of them are used for best in slot items at level 19, which is going to be hugely in demand when battlegrounds come out and people will want to twink in this bracket. So battlegrounds aren't even out yet, yet one of the items that you can get from Shadowfang Keep I saw on the auction house on my server go for hundreds of gold. This is Shadowfang, the best in slot main hand weapon for rogues in the 19 twink bracket. The mobs in SFK have about a 0.04% chance of dropping the Shadowfang, and Shadowfang is the most expensive and lucrative item that you can get. But that's not to say that there's not a bunch of other extremely valuable items in this dungeon. There's also the Assassin's Blade, which goes for a lot of gold as well, and that has a similar drop chance to Shadowfang. To be honest, I'm not the right class to farm this dungeon. In fact, I'm pretty sure that you need to be a mage to do this properly, or at least the most efficient. But just keep in mind that if you run this dungeon, eventually you will get one of these expensive blue items, and hopefully this is one of the best in slot items for a level 19 twink, and you will become rich overnight. Although that being said, if you grind this dungeon and you miraculously get one of these drops, I would advise that you hang on to it until phase 3 comes out, where the demand for twink items will be at the highest. Number 4 on this list is Golden Pearls. So guys, this is a farm that I've discovered pretty recently, and to be honest, before yesterday I had no idea that this actually existed. Golden Pearls can actually be farmed quite easily, through killing aquatic monsters that are above level 40. So guys, what is a golden pearl? Golden pearls are extremely in demand in Classic WoW because they are used in a bunch of really high-end recipes. This is used in recipes such as Enchant Weapon Spell Power, Ruined Arcanite Rod, and some tailoring epics such as True Faith Vestments and Gloves of Spell Mastery. So golden pearls are very much in demand by max level players with a lot of gold to spare, and will always be in demand since the spell power enchant is best in slot for a lot of caster DPS. And from what I've seen in the auction house, these golden pearls usually go for about 6.5 gold, all the way up to 25 gold each, which is absolutely insane, but on my server they're pretty cheap. So as I mentioned before, the way to get this is by killing aquatic monsters beyond level 40. And when I say aquatic monsters, I mean monsters that can drop the big mouth clam. In Classic WoW, a lot of aquatic monsters drop these clams, and they're basically an item that you get that is like a mini treasure chest. Inside, you usually get clam meat and some seaweed, and that's about it. But sometimes you can get very lucky and get a pearl that drops. These pearls vary in value, however, the Big Mouth Clam has about a 1.7% chance of being inside one of these clams. So by killing aquatic monsters such as crabs, turtles, murlocs, and naga, Eventually, you will get a golden pearl from one of these clams. And these clams have a 50% drop chance, so to be honest, it really won't take you that long until you get a golden pearl from them. Not to mention all the other loot that you'll get in addition to this. Again, this is counterintuitive since a lot of people playing Classic WoW get kind of annoyed by clams since they take up so much inventory space. Some even vendor them and don't actually open up the clams. This is a huge mistake as at least for the big mouth clams, you could have a small fortune that is inside one of these clams that you never knew existed. So if you're grinding on mobs and trying to level up, you might want to try and grind on some aquatic monsters to get some of these clams. 
It's kind of annoying to open up all of these individually, but it's definitely worth it if you get one of these golden pearls. Okay, so number three on this list is the elemental fire. So guys, in Classic Crowd, there is a bunch of recipes that use elementals. These are items that are found from elemental NPCs that have a chance of dropping an elemental. That sounds kind of confusing, but it's just the name this item has. However, right now, the most expensive elemental that you can get is elemental fire, which, as I mentioned, drops from fire elementals. The only problem is the vast majority of fire elementals are inside high-level dungeons and raids, such as Blackrock Depths and Molten Core. However, there are some low-level fire elementals that are in the open world that are easy to farm. I think the first farmable instance of a fire elemental is in Stone Talon Mountains, but the most consistent way to farm elemental fires is in Arafi Highlands. There's a bunch of these circles that have different elemental NPCs that are involved in the quests. However, the elementals that we want to be killing are the fire elementals that are near the most eastern point of the map. These guys have a relatively small chance of dropping an elemental fire, which if drops, will usually sell for about 80 silver, all the way up to a couple of gold each. And these will always be in demand, since this is a key reagent that is used in the Greater Fire Protection Potions, one of the most highly consumed potions in Classic WoW, that are obviously going to be used a lot in Molten Core by a team of 40 people. So there is a pretty much endless demand for elemental fire, and a very small supply. So as you can guess, there's quite a lot of gold to be made from elemental fires. Elemental fires are also used in creating the field repair bot, a fire resistance enchant for cloaks, and the goblin mortar. Over time, elemental fires will just go up and up in value the more people start raiding molten core, so you might want to buy it and hoard them, and then sell them later at a higher price when the demand is higher. The Burning Exile NPCs that you can find here also have a high chance of dropping a Burning Charm. We sell for about 15 silver each on the auction house and have a very high drop chance of about 50%. So to be honest, this is a very good place to farm some gold. The only problem is if you're any kind of high level, you'll run out of mobs to kill and wait for them to respawn. However, you can just layer hop and hopefully go onto a lair where nobody else is there. Number two on this list is fused wiring. So guys, this is another item that is very expensive and is used in quite a lot of key recipes. Things such as the field repair bot, goblin jumper cables, mechanical dragonling, and so on, all require a fused wiring. The only problem is there's very few ways to actually obtain a fused wiring in the open world. One of the most farmable ways to get a fused wiring is from the Venture Crow Shredders that you can find in Stranglethorn Vale. These guys have about a 6% chance of dropping a fused wiring, and depending on the server's age, can even go up to 5 gold plus. At the very least, you should get 1 gold for it, but this is a pretty good item to get, especially for the level that you can acquire it, which is high level 30s. The only problem is, is that the Venture Crow Shredders, there's only 3 that actually spawn, so you might want to farm these when it's off peak hours, to make sure that no one else snipes these Goblin Shredders. If you're fortunate enough to come here by yourself, you can pretty much farm these, get some good XP, and hopefully get a few of these fused wirings to sell on the auction house. I'm pretty sure that the price of these will go up over time, so like a lot of the things on this list, unless you need money now, you might want to keep hold of them in your bank. Okay, so number one on this list is the Giant Egg. Any of you guys that are level 40 plus would have probably come across these if you've been killing any kind of avian creatures. Any bird that is above level 40 will have a pretty good chance of dropping a giant egg, and you may think, well, it's only just going to be used in cooking, so there's not really going to be much demand for it on the auction house. However, this is not the case. The giant egg is used in a recipe that creates the monster omelette, which as of now is pretty much the best food buff that you can get as of this recording. So a stack of giant eggs can actually sell for about 2-3 to three gold each. As I mentioned before, to get a giant egg is really simple due to birds above level 40 having a very high chance of dropping them. A pretty good way to farm these in the mid level 40s are the rocks that you can find in Tanaris. I grinded a few levels here and I got quite a lot of giant egg stacks just from grinding the rocks here. However, the regular rocks are not the best target to grind. I know this isn't a video about grinding experience, however I feel it's worthwhile mentioning that the fire rocks that are nearby, one of the skeletons in Tanaris, these guys are a few levels higher, however they have about the same HP, meaning that they are ideal for grinding XP and gold at the same time. While I was here, I was killing quite a lot of these guys, and I got a lot of really good grey items, and of course the giant eggs. 
The only problem is, after you run out of them, you will have to kill some of the hyenas, but it's okay because the hyenas drop some pretty expensive great items, so it works out in the end. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you enjoyed the video, please drop a like down below and subscribe to the channel. This is Volti, signing out.